stage persona in Cradle of Filth is what really heralded the way I did the voice in Dominator, seeing as he's supposed to be the undead god of everything rock and roll and uh, the last respectable rock icon, as it were. Um, and it, it commanded a strong performance as opposed to a small, weedy, shallow voice, uh, better befitting someone like Eminem, for example. And uh, I think this is the best way to portray him. What's going on here then? Start talking shithead! I mean, he would sound a little camp with a, a tiny little wee voice emanating from such a monstrous physique. You're pissing in the wind, Violator! It's over between us! Now get lost! I brought a little bit of myself to the role, the, the sort of deep side of it. I didn't bother with any sort of high pitched vocals or anything on it because, you know, he's, he's a big, big chap. He's got to sound like a uh, bowel movement, <laughs> hellish bowel movement every time he talks. Hey, what a shag. Tell us, what, happy people, what the hell are you doing with a skeleton in your kitchen? Um, well it's a new kitchen and we thought it was, uh, it'd just be ironic really to have a, a skeleton in there. And you can control the lights and dim it. And you can walk across it because it's a uh, childproof glass. Um, so is that Fanny Craddock? <laughs> it's someone's Fanny, yes. The um, thing is, obviously, when we come to sell the house, we'll just have to wang a rug over it so, so they don't actually see it until, um, until they move in and they can discover it for themselves. I have another 30 of these, but they're borrowed, buried around plots of, in, in the garden. Hence, so far, we've had that redone. Um, we're in my office and uh, it probably looks a lot bigger uh, in the camera than it does in real life but um, it's just crap um, I've collected over the years because I'm a big fan of things like um, Giant robots, <laughs> if that rings a bell. Demonic women and uh, serial killers and uh, Nightmare Before Christmas, which is obviously an amalgam of everything that Dominator stands for. Animation in general is uh, one of my likes, and Nightmare Before Christmas and uh, the way it's filmed and the, the style, the stop mo uh, animation. And uh, obviously, this can be linked through to things like Devil Man and uh, Vampire Hunter D, which is all the manga animation, which uh, Dominator has sort of been vomited forth from, and is this kind of um, a corroboration between Japanese film work and uh, British film work. Um, but I think without less of the, the bullshit. Tell you the truth. It's, it's nice for once to actually get something that's uh, written in English uh, other than being translated from Japanese and be talking about Brussels sprouts and let's fight now and uh, stuff like that. So I think uh, that's where Dominate comes into the fold and uh, works quite well uh, within the context of the genre. My personal favourite scene uh, from Dominator, aside from uh, the jargon because obviously the Mark and Lard interaction scenes obviously the best, the pub scenes and uh, the last section as the film closes. Um, but my all-time favourite one, it's very manga-esque, is I believe where Lady Violator is standing atop uh, one of the buildings and it's just the sky and the way it's all shot, the way she looks. Um, that's just my favourite part of it, just for style. Ironically, and to prove that it is quite a small world, um, Ingrid Pitt, who obviously plays Lady Violator, and uh, Doug Bradley, who plays Doc Payne in Dominator, uh, both uh, interacted on our albums. Ingrid Pitt uh, was on Cruelty and the Beast, which was um, an album that concerned itself with the Blood Countess Elizabeth Bathory, and of course Ingrid Pitt, famous portrayal of Elizabeth Bathory in the Hammer film uh, Countess Dracula. And uh, with Doug Bradley as well, Doug Bradley is obviously infamous for Pinhead, um, but it's probably lesser known that he also played um, the Oracle of Midian in the film Nightbreed, which was based on 
Clive Barker's Cabal. We had an album called Midian, so it only seemed right that he should narrate on that as well. And I was saying it's a small world because we've all ended up um, in this proverbial soup um, that is Dominator. It was excellent working uh, with Doug Bradley again, just because he's a, he's a really nice guy. You know, diminutive in stature as is myself, compared with his on-stage persona, as it were, as mine is Danny Filth, his is Pinhead, and I mean, um, as with Christopher Lee, he'll probably rebuke the, the position that he's been put in, you know, thrust into the spotlight that that's his main character, but everybody will remember him, as they did with Christopher Lee being Dracula. Everybody will remember the icon that is Pinhead, and uh, obviously Doug Bradley played him, so he'll become synonymous with him. Um, but aside from, like I say, the on-stage persona and on-screen persona that is that is both characters off-screen in particular I, I can't speak for myself but Doug Bradley is a, a very nice character very f you know far flung from the image portrayed in, in, in the whole Hellraiser saga <laughs>